of doing something ourselves that really has a great effect, a great effect on our reality. Because the brain is like a computer that's just loading a program each day. So each day we load our previous days, our previous life's programs, all the perceived challenges and problems, all the history, all the information from the past days becomes loaded every day that we wake up and we remember, oh yeah, I am afraid of singing. Oh yeah, I have this issue. And no, the thing is, we get to again with our true divine power decide. We get to decide what it is we wish to load today. And by regularly noticing, plucking and releasing, pruning, by regularly pruning our energy, our beliefs, our thoughts, we get to, we get to create more room for more of our divine self to come in. <laughs> Thank you for that comment. So let's move on to identifying. Now that we know that there's energies that we have, now that we know we have the power to pluck them, to release them, let's identify the places of self-sabotage and playing small. Because this is something that goes hand in hand with limiting energies. Um, this is something that, um, again, we've been suppressed. Our true heart's nature has been suppressed just by virtue of the state of the culture and the world right now. We're not usually celebrated in truly expressing our heart's uniqueness. Just, you know, there has been, of course, throughout time, this has been true, this has existed and has happened, that the true path of the heart is celebrated. And overall, we see that there is more of a standardization happening and that um, playing small is a way to fit in to the standardization of our world right now. Because usually our heart's path is luminous and blazing and undetermined. Um, even to us, even we don't really know how it will show up day to day. So let's take away that, that learning of standardization and get in something else. So the places where I notice that self-sabotage or playing small happens is when I've committed to optimizing my experience in some way. And then right as I'm getting to that threshold of honoring my commitment, there's like a, a feeling of tiredness or a feeling of like, oh, well, I don't really have time for it today and such and such an excuse. So I just won't. And you know, the practices and the tools that I personally use, that I share with clients, that I speak about because I love them, they're usually such quick experiences that when I feel, oh, I'm too tired or I don't have enough time, I know that that is not reality. I know there's enough time because the practice is, you know, two minutes or five minutes. You know, one can lock themselves in the bathroom and do it and not be questioned because it's such a quick practice. <laughs> so we can identify places of, you know, self-sabotage when we feel this kind of, where again, it requires listening, right? It requires listening to our thoughts and our beliefs to identify that, to become bigger then, and to in that place of abiding and looking at our personality, because it's our personality, not our soul that is tired or, doesn't want to do some practice and it's not even our soul that needs some practice or to dismantle beliefs it's our personality that has beliefs and you know we from that higher vantage point give our personality a way to dismantle beliefs so that more of our soul can shine through so you know waiting for that the fabled tomorrow that oh well when when monday comes i'll start that workout or when I get a new computer, I'll start my website. <laughs> so all these ways that, you know, we would love to keep ourselves in that comfortable place. We would love to just stay comfortable and 
um, you know, not realize how powerful we are. There's that famous quote that I wish I had with me right now, um, maybe by Marianne Williamson, I think, where it's, we're not, it's not our darkness or our smallness that we're afraid of. It's our true power and our true light, something like that. I love that. So yeah, because the way that we really show up in the world or are able to, or the way that we really know that we came here to do that, to really show up in that way, that is what scares us because there's so few, really so few examples of that in the world um, and throughout history of humans really embodied in the soul, the, the soul embodied in the body that carries it, really shining, really sort of, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter the feedback that I get, doesn't matter what happens. I know that from love, from kindness, from joy, true action takes place. So really to nurture that and step into that and live that consistently, um, that's golden. So that's where self-sabotage gets us because all of a sudden we think, oh my, well, what will happen? <laughs> so also thinking that, um, oh, well, there's no point. There's no point to do that practice. Oh, it's so simplistic. Well, it really won't have an effect. Well, we don't really know until we try, right? And as I've been saying, the simplistic practices are actually where the magic is. Um, and that's why so much of it possibly is overlooked right now, these like grounded, effective, simple practices. Um, because we're, you know, chasing like the pizzazz or chasing some sort of like grand visions or incredible experiences when really just daily, minute by minute, doing that work of cleaning the attic, strengthening the heart field, that's where it all is. Um, also thinking that, um, you know, oh, well, no one will be interested if I switch the conversation over to this topic or, well, who's going to care if I show up in a more loving way or a more calm way? Like no one's really going to notice and oh, it takes too much effort to do so. So I'll just continue doing my thing. So these are all self-sabotage ways. So when we hear that, like, don't let it, don't let ourselves fool ourselves into thinking that, you know, we don't know enough to start something or are not good enough to do something. Um, when we hear that, we can be like, oh, cool. There's that thought. And I'm just going to go the soul way, soul way anyway. <laughs> so let's just take a moment to identify some desired action that we have and the resistance that we have to it. So again, just think about anything that comes to mind that you know that previously you wanted to act upon and then there was something that kind of like blocked you or you resisted. So just take a moment to identify that. And then we're going to ask a question. This is a very effective technique that I'm going to introduce you to. So we're going to ask ourselves, who is it that, and then make our sentence. So for example, who is it that doesn't want to meditate daily? Who is it that feels they are not good enough? Who is it that is worried? So you just make the sentence, who is it that for your experience of resistance? And you keep, you can say it out loud or you can say it internally and you repeat that. And sometimes you will see some answer pop up. So who is it that, that doesn't want to meditate daily? Oh, it's the one that thinks that it's, it's ineffective. Well, who is it that thinks meditation is ineffective? And then you start repeating that. So there's usually these beliefs and these personality structures. They're like a chain. So when we take just a couple moments with this question, and as it reveals itself to go deeper, 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 and just take it, you know, as deep as it goes. So just take a moment and just keep rephrasing if new things come up. And if nothing comes up, if nothing, nothing comes up, maybe take a different question. Um, and just start to see your layers. So let's just take a moment with that. Who is it that?
okay, so this is a really effective practice. So again, that question seems kind of strange, but why would we ask that? What does it mean? Where does it lead? So that doesn't even matter. It's effective and it allows us to see the ego or the personality structure and just see through it. See through it to who is it that well? It is, you know, it, there is basically we'll get to a point where we might, might feel like, oh, it's no one. There's no one there. So it clears, it clears these beliefs, these emotions, these sensations really quickly. And we could also use it in a moment of being triggered. Like, well, who is it that's angry right now? Who is it that's angry right now? And, you know, we might still feel anger. We might still feel shame, resentment, whatever it is that's playing through our bodies. That said, this is a way to see it rather than be it, right? So super effective. Um, yeah, this is something that um, when we commit to doing just a couple minutes of this a day or just as it comes up, as we remember to, as we identify some experience, um, we can really go deep really quickly. So with that kind of question, we can identify the situations of emotional turmoil. So, you know, we've just come out of the holiday season. That is a ripe time <clears throat> for emotional challenges and emotional turmoil um, with family, with friends. Um, but in general, we just want to look at our life and see, like, where are and what are those places where. So when we say emotional turmoil, that's almost like another experience of energy leak. Because to be in turmoil can be pretty exhausting. <laughs> so do we have like a draining relationship, a draining romantic relationship maybe? Um, and this is so normal, you know, <laughs> so normal and common for life as a human to have an emotional um, experience during a relationship. We are in relationship with everything. We're even in relationship with our personality, our own selves. We are, you know, in relationship with time. We're in relationship with the economy. We're in relationship with everything. So it's, uh, it's really amazing to have the tools to navigate when something happens that brings us um, into an emotional experience. And the main thing, again, like we spoke about earlier about staying quiet without taking action so this is really huge right now when there's an emotional trigger the pruning of this emotional kind of experience is to stay quiet before um, externally processing anything so this has been something this is like a little tidbit of emotional mastery um, this is something that I find really valuable um, for relational experiences that when I am feeling a trigger of, let's say it's something like I see someone doing something and I think, oh no, it's gotta be done this other way. And then, you know, maybe that's legitimate. Maybe like you legitimately could use a different method for arranging the furniture or peeling a carrot, you know, and then we can talk about it and explore it together. Though often um, when we're in an emotional trigger, so going back to that example of, oh, do it this other way, that's usually coming from a place of restriction within ourselves, a place of um, forgetting, again, like the, the power that I intrinsically have as a sovereign divine being and the power that every single other unique human being has as their divine, divine gift. So the thing is to not speak from that place, not speak from that place of trigger. Um, and just take that moment to really come back to the self. And sometimes I will be in a place like that and I will come back to myself and I will feel heat just like coursing through my body. It's just heat and constriction. And then I know for sure that that is not a place to speak truth and clarity and wisdom from. Even though I really want to say something and even though I really think that I'm right. Who is it that thinks they are right? Who is it that is feeling so angry right now? Who is it that wants to exert control right now? 
So this is a huge thing to prune back. This is a huge tactic of pruning here because in so many moments as we live our life, um, this will this will occur, this will come up, that there is an experience in relationship where we could speak from a place of heat and trigger. And it's so crucial to just know and have practice and have the capacity as it grows, our capacity for this will grow to come back. And, you know, with time, you can come back, you know, depending on the situation, you can come back almost instantly. And you could witness a storm happening in your body and in your mind. And at the same time, you could have the capacity to speak soulfully, to speak lovingly, to speak with curiosity and patience. So breath practice, I find, is the most potent during emotion. Because really, when, you, when, you're, when I'm in an emotion, all I have is the breath. Because all of the other areas are taking up, it seems. Because there's anger or there's desire or there's, you know, action on the verge of action. And the only thing left is the breath. So a really, so let's just like in this moment just practice that because it's great to practice it in a neutral space. So use the breath to feel the body, to feel it in a space that it's in your sit bones, your feet. Maybe you can even feel your skin traced by a breeze that's happening. And identify any, any emotion that you're experiencing right now, or maybe you can recall a time when you were triggered. And the key thing is to sense yourself, sense your true self as you become bigger than the emotion. So do you need to become as big as the room you're in? Or is the emotion so big that you need to become bigger? You need to become as big as the building or as big as the city. Expand your awareness and your consciousness to be as big as the city, as big as the planet. Maybe your emotion is so strong and so present that you need to poof, expand to be as big as the universe. And continue with the breath. Continue with the breath as it massages your body open and into release, open and into release. And this is something that's when, like, ambushes us. When an emotion ambushes us, it's so incredible to remember that we can become bigger than it and expand our sense of consciousness. So this is a something to take away too. Hmm. Wow. So we've covered a lot of territory right now. There's been quite a few tools and action steps. So let's just take a moment to let it sink in. And if there's any like notes or any sensations that you wish to write down. Let's just take a moment to do that right now. Again, thank you so much for honoring yourself in this way to show up and to get excited about pruning what doesn't serve you. Um, because there's so much goodness that can come through each and every one of us that by actively taking responsibility for releasing um, and learning the tools to release, we can really make an impact in our own lives, first and foremost. And then really it ripples, it ripples into the world. There's ways that we can't even conceive of, of how our action, vibration, presence affects a huge chain reaction. Um, it's really beyond our conception. And I'm continually amazed by experiences of witnessing that, you know. Um, sometimes I'll see how someone, you know, parks in a certain way and how that affects the way a person walks or what they will see or notice or how they will speak to someone or, you know, something as frivolous as the way a car is parked affects 
a chain reaction. We are continuously affecting the world. That's something that um, can feel so huge to perceive and it's not meant to bring any sort of like um, anxiety in. It's more a sense of understanding and really coming to terms with the amount of capacity we have. So when we focus on aligning our actions with the greatest intention, the best way to utilize this kind of rippling chain reaction is to just come into a space where the actions that we put forth are our best possible actions. And by best, it doesn't have to be grandiose. It just means that to the greatest capacity that we have today, we have chosen clarity. We have chosen love and compassion. To the greatest possible effect today. So just by saying, yes, this is my intention to cultivate my capacity in this, just by saying that, there's already huge success. Because when we align our, our lives to that kind of intention, so much support is given to us. So much information comes our way. So many people, we meet so many people, um, so many ideas and moments. So it's just, it's so beautiful the way that we get to experience our life and affect the world. It's really something that continuously, daily inspires me. So let's move on to ways to prune unnecessary money spending because I really want this year for all of us to be abundant and prosperous and, and feel sturdy. So living in the world that we are in, this is a world where material objects and energy, so like energy manifests in a material way and works together. And I really think that I'm starting to see that money is one of these magical things that is both physical because it's a bill and it's a coin and it's energetic because we give our energy as creativity, as time to receive it as value, as worth to receive this physical substance that also represents energy that when we give it is very often creating an energetic experience and can give us an energetic experience, like something that we can experience, something that we can consume and create energy with like food. Money just seems like a very magical substance. So it's definitely something that as a spiritually oriented, intentionally oriented person, it is very valuable to look at money in our lives and to strengthen and optimize our relationship with money because this is what supports us living our most grandest expression, our best expression of life. We need money to create our best life. And it's, money is not something we get that then like sits with us forever, of course. Money is something that flows through us. So again, that energetic idea, that energetic form, we rarely have like a bill or a coin that stays with us for, you know, more than, you know, a month, like an actual physical bill or a coin. It flows through us. Whereas other material things we have in our life, like a computer or a bed, those may stay with us for years. So it's a really interesting thing to contemplate. And it's definitely something that we want to prune our relationship with so that it can grow. So the first um, thing that I would really love to address is address the abundance that we already have. So it's very um, frequent that we are extremely abundant. That's a frequent situation. Where, so let me tell you what I mean by that. So when we look around our space, around our life, there may be um, things that we have used money to receive that now are with us that create abundance for us. So these may be actually like single, you know, you might have like a really beautiful bed that you enjoy and sleep on. And what I'm talking about also are things like maybe we have a lot of um, like body products, something that you can also use. Maybe we have a lot of like supplements 
or herbs. So, or maybe we have a lot of clothes or shoes. There is something, I think, in our lives that we have an abundance of. So when I say a lot, that doesn't mean, you know, it's whatever a lot is to you. It's whatever a lot is for you. In some place, in some way in your life, you're abundant. And it's possible that um, we are not even like utilizing that abundance on a regular basis. So let me give you an example. For me, it's definitely um, herbs because I really love working with plants and with herbs and I wild craft them. So I go into nature and I harvest them sustainably myself. I would grow them in a garden and I also purchase herbs. So I have a collection of herbs that I use. And I also notice throughout time that I'm not actually using them um, as much as I can. So I notice that I'm actually extremely abundant in herbs, something that I value highly, something that gives me a great like return because it creates health in my body. It gives me joy when I actually concoct um, recipes with them. So I started to make a point to use my abundance. So I made a commitment to myself that I would use the herbs that I have and that I would start to use them regularly. So for you, like what place is it in your life that you are abundant in and how much of this stuff or these things do you actually use? So look around your space. This is a great thing to do at the beginning of the year to look around our space and to really get clear on what is it that I could use more of in my space? What is it that I already have that I really love that I can just take advantage of and relish that I've already invested in previously and now I just get to enjoy it. I forgot that I invested money into this and I haven't even enjoyed it. So there's that, like get clear on where are you abundant and enjoy it. And also if you find places that you have something and you're, you know, you see that you're not gonna utilize it or enjoy it, um, you know, decide what you will do because everything, as everything is energy, we have our space that we live in and we want to optimize our space to really support us in expressing our greatest joy, our greatest life, our greatest love. So we don't want something stagnant in our space. So this really comes back to, you know, are there clothes that we haven't worn in a long time and can we commit to selecting those pieces of clothing and then giving them away, bringing them to a donation place, or maybe even there's something that you can sell to receive money back. So this is so pertinent. And again, it seems like, oh, well, when am I going to have time to do this? Or, oh, is it really going to be effective to try to sell something or give it away? Yes, 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 yes. Definitely get in there. Get in your space, even if it's like one drawer per week, you know? You have your like one hour on the weekend that you're going to take a look at this drawer or take a look at that closet and just understand like how much of this do I use? How much of this is actually garbage? Sometimes things are actually garbage and we're leaving them in our space as um, kind of like stagnant energies. So really just moving the energy, just the way that we move the energy in our body with everything that we've talked about previously. Right now we're, moving the energy in our space, in our living container, where we are. So uh, the car is also a huge thing. <laughs> Sometimes people have like really full cars. <laughs> so just, you know, if you wish to just make that commitment to yourself to say, okay, well, this week or this month or whatever you feel is approachable for you to get in there and to check out what it is you actually have, because I think that you are abundant in some way. So then there's also like money leak. You know, there's ways that we leak money. <laughs> so that's like recurring payments, overdrafts, things that um, maybe we're not addressing, maybe we're not going into our bank account. Um, you know, and today it's so easy to do online banking, going into our bank account and just looking at getting real with the numbers, getting real with our spending, getting real with, well, where am I paying something that I no longer choose to pay where am i paying that like three dollar per month membership or like fifteen dollar thing that actually like i could choose to do differently so again it's bringing back that power bringing back that divine energy from source and claiming fully claiming it in every aspect of our lives there is nothing that is out of our power i'm just going to be bold and put it out there 
within our life, in our life, everything is within our power and decision and choice. So really like activating that in every place. And if there's fear or concern about looking at our bank accounts, um, you know, I recommend that we do it anyway. Do it with the fear, do it with the concern, you know, use the techniques that we spoke about before, write down your fears and flip them and say, who is it that is afraid of understanding the money situation? Who is it that doesn't want to get real about their money situation? This is such an important experience in creating our best year because finances are a real thing and the more abundant we are the more prosperous we are the easier our creativity gets to embody and flow through us because we're clear in more and more aspects of our life and we're letting more and more aspects of our life um, be strengthened by the movement of energy so like a body is really healthy with moving energy and so is every other aspect of our life. It all kind of comes back to us. We're like the center of our own cosmos. So this is something to take advantage of as well. Step for this is to identify where you are abundant one space per week that you commit to checking out and cleaning out, you know, and there will be a point where you're so with this that maybe you don't even think there is another space to look at, or maybe you need to do it just once a month, once a month, <laughs> once every couple months. So yes, this is definitely part of the pruning process so that more and more can flower because as we make room, more will come to fill it. You know, there's, Energy is always present. Energy is always flowing and it wants to come to us. The universe really does want us to be happy and joyful and abundant. And we just got to like make that room by pruning our, our roses. <laughs> okay. So there's been a lot here. I think that for the time being, this is as much as we're going to talk about for pruning. So let's just take a moment to close the space here. So coming into the breath and maybe you want to put a hand on your heart and just feel your heartbeat through your hand. The way that we honored the body in the beginning of our meeting together. And look, it's served us all the way through this experience together. So just coming back into gratitude with it again. I think we can always come back to gratitude with our body. That's something that's available to us. And we can definitely experience more and more of that. Just breathing softly into the belly. And I thank you so much for being a part of this container here today, for activating your true highest creative potential, for choosing to walk your soul path into create a beautiful year for yourself. Thank you. So I'll see you tomorrow for building up to new heights. Now that we've pruned, we're going to plant some seeds and we're going to build up with strength and with endurance. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.